A guardsman cleaning and polishing his kit. It's daily routine for men of the household division and public duties, the shining of the boots until the toe cap can be used as a mirror, the blankoing of the bayonet scabbard and the belt, brushing of the rifle butt, the grooming of the bearskins. For the public before whom any guards regiment performs its duties has come to have high expectations, an immaculate turnout and unequalled perfection of drill. Yesterday, the Queen's Company of the 1st Battalion, the 1st or Grenadier Regiment of Foot Guards took even greater care than usual with their daily routine. For this morning, at Horse Guards, they will be at the centre of one of the world's great ceremonial occasions. The Queen's Birthday Parade, Trooping the Colour. setting to match the spectacle, the wide rectangular arena of Horse Guards Parade, set between the Mall and Downing Street and between Whitehall and St. James's Park. To the north, the colour at the heart of this morning's parade, the Queen's colour of the 1st Battalion Grenadier Guards, in the charge of Sergeant David Chimes. To the right, Guardsman Brian Barnard, who's 19 and 6 feet 5 inches, and on the left, Guardsman Anthony Laywood, 21, all but 9 days, and 6 feet 8 inches tall. And behind them, the red brick of the Admiralty building. The stands crowded, as you can see. As they are all around this arena. To the east, William Kent's fine horse guards building, completed in 1760 after his death. Headquarters of the Household Division and London District, regimental headquarters of the Household Cavalry, with its famous clock tower in the middle, the most reliable and popular timepiece in West London until Big Ben took pride of place in 1859. And to the south, the old Treasury Building and trees in the back garden of Sir George Downing's speculative housing scheme, Downing Street, home of the Sovereign's principal minister since 1732. And in the stand, the guests of the lady who in the last 48 hours has renewed her tenancy of number 10 for a further five years, representatives of the Commonwealth. To the west where the Commonwealth flags fly, St. James's Park, with the Guards Memorial standing where until 1905 there was a stall at which you could buy fresh milk from the cows grazing in the Royal Park. Much of the pleasure which Trooping the Colour gives to people who may not appreciate the finer niceties of the drill manual comes, of course, from the music. Most of it provided by the musicians of the mass bands of the Guards Division. The bands of all five regiments of foot guards, plus the corps of drums of the four battalions on parade, and also, this morning, the pipes and drums of the 2nd Battalion Scots Guards. 360 musicians in all, under the direction of Lieutenant Colonel Dick Ridings, Coldstream Guards, Senior Director of Music, Guards Division. Left and in front of the mass bands, number one guard called at this stage the escort for the colour and number two guard. Both are found by the 1st Battalion Grenadier Guards, regular buttons, white plumes on the left of the bearskins being the right of the line. Numbers three and four guards, number three guard opened up for the arrival of the Queen Mother, are found by the 2nd Battalion Scots Guards, buttons in threes as the 3rd Guards Regiment and no plume on the bearskin. They were to have been on parade last year, but found themselves engaged in a fierce action at Mount Tumbledown instead. And so, many of them this morning are wearing the South Atlantic medal. The colours of the ribbon chosen to represent the cold waters of the Southern Ocean and the green slopes of the Falkland Islands. And that South Atlantic medal is also worn by many men of numbers five and six guards which form the corner of the L-shaped line and are found by the 1st Battalion Welsh Guards, for whom this past week has been full of memories of their sad losses at Bluff Cove. Buttons in fives as the 5th and youngest regiment of foot guards formed in 19... 
15 and a white green and white plume to the left of the bearskin. We have the regulation eight guards again this year and numbers seven and eight guards to the north of the parade are found by 140 men of the 1st Battalion Coldstream Guards. Buttons in twos, red plume worn on the right of the cap so that they can be identified when in their appropriate placing as the left regiment of the line. So, a more familiar sight than the six guards of last summer. And the one guards regiment not on parade, although represented this morning by its colonel, its commanding officer, its regimental adjutant and its band, is the Irish Guards. The first battalion of this, the fourth regiment of foot guards, formed in 1900 by command of Her Majesty Queen Victoria, has since last year's birthday parade been doing a tour of duty in the Federal Republic of Germany. They're stationed in Munster, part of Four Armoured Brigade, which in turn is part of Britain's land force commitment to NATO. So this Guards Regiment is in the front line of the West's Defensive Alliance. What we're seeing now is a fairly normal platoon exercise. It's all part of the continuous realistic and arduous training which the Irish Guards will undergo during the next three years. The enemy sniper has been located in the edge of wood at Grid 119654. A mission, India 1, is to destroy enemy sniper at Grid 119654. This year's training will culminate in a six weeks exercise on the plains of Alberta and Canada during the autumn. Live ammunition will then be used and the battalion will be brought together with armor, artillery, anti-tank and air defense missiles, engineers and helicopters in maneuvers which, like these, are designed to train and test the regiment under the stress of battlefield conditions. A far cry it may seem from the ceremonial drill on Horse Guards Parade. And yet it's closely linked in terms of concentration, discipline, attention to detail, and an ability to work together and to think together in pursuit of a common aim. So the first battalion, the Irish Guards, in Germany. The common aim of the eight guards already drawn up in horse guards is that this year's birthday parade will be one of those vintage parades remembered by guardsmen as special. A triumphant Mrs. Thatcher sitting in front of the garden wall of number 10 Downing Street. And along the mile, the first of the two royal processions is approaching. That of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, who someone once said was founded in the same year as the Irish Guards, 1900. It left Buckingham Palace at 10.42 and now arrives at the approach road. The Queen Mother first attended the birthday parade 60 years ago to watch her husband, the Duke of York, riding in RAF uniform. He was 10 years later appointed Colonel of the Scots Guards and three and a half years after that unexpectedly became King. And there she is with the Princess of Wales and the Duke of Beaufort, an old friend, the same age they first met when both were 17 years of age. Former master of the horse, of course. These little carriages which we see every year at the Queen's Birthday Parade, the barouche, Rides along the approach road, lots of flags waving, the white flagpoles are carrying the flags of the Commonwealth. 
Queen Elizabeth in powder blue and always enjoys every occasion. And as she arrives now at the center roadway, she will be greeted at horse guards by a royal salute. The guards have presented arms. mother's carriage drives under the archway that marks the boundary between the parishes of St. Martin's in the Fields and St. Margaret's Westminster. So you'll watch from the Major General's office above, once the Duke of Wellington's office as uh, Commander-in-Chief. He rode from this building to his retirement in 1852. Meanwhile, the Queen's procession, led by the masked mounted bands of the Household Cavalry and the 1st and 2nd Divisions of the Sovereign's Escort, left the palace at 10.45. And so, with the uh, Sovereign, the representatives of the last two of the seven regiments of the Household Division, the Lifeguards and the Blues and Royals, approach along the Mall, the parade ground, which last month saw an important event in their long history of royal service from the 17th century. It was on Thursday, the 19th of May, that Her Majesty the Queen, Colonel-in-Chief of the Household Cavalry, accompanied by Princess Anne, arrived in horse guards in an open carriage on a bright sunny spring morning to present new standards to the two regiments which together form the Household Cavalry. The old standards presented ten years ago, four belonging to the lifeguards and four to the Blues and Royals, had been received on parade, carried by the mounted standard bearers. One of the standards of the Blues and Royals, tattered and torn. It was the squadron standard carried in Hyde Park last July when an officer and three troopers of the regiment were killed by a bomb attack on the Queen's lifeguard. And seven horses also were killed or had to be destroyed. standards of both regiments were trooped along the ranks for the last time. Before leaving the parade, as the bands played, Old Lang Syne. to the standard of St. George, the new standards were marched onto the parade. One sovereign standard and three squadron or union standards for each regiment. The lifeguards with scarlet tunics and white helmet plumes, blues and royals with blue tunics and red plumes. And the standards were placed on the priceless silver kettle drums presented to the second lifeguards in 1830 by William IV and to the Royal Horse Guards, the Blues part of the Blues and Royals by George III in 1805. The mounted standard parties had returned to the parade to receive the new standards. While Her Royal Highness, the Princess Anne, watched from the Royal Dares, the Queen stood with Major General Lord Michael Fitzalan Howard Colonel of the Lifeguards on her left and General Sir Desmond Fitzpatrick, Colonel of the Blues and Royals, on her right. New standards were consecrated by the Chaplain General and then brought forward by the Quartermasters to be touched symbolically by Her Majesty as a token of her giving. So 
before being received by the commanding officer of each regiment and handed to a corporal major. Friends and families were watching from the stands. The four new standards of the lifeguards and of the Blues and Royals, their battle honour spanning more than three centuries. London pigeons, a sense of occasion is second nature, as a fanfare is sounded by trumpeters in state dress. Mounted squadrons rank past their colonel in chief. And the new standards, which will remain in service for another ten years, were for the first time lowered before the sovereign. The lifeguards came first, followed by the blues and royals. as a reminder that the household cavalry is much more than two mounted squadrons appearing at ceremonial occasions in gleaming breastplates and helmets. Representatives of the two armoured regiments, not often seen in horse guards parade, drove past. Armoured personnel carriers, fox and scorpion reconnaissance vehicles, ferret scout cars and sultan command vehicles. An impressive display as the guns swivelled and were lowered in salute. And so an unusual blending of horsepower, ancient and modern, on this most revered and traditional of parade grounds. And Her Majesty the Queen arrives now at the approach roads to a tremendous cheer, wearing the uniform of Colonel-in-Chief, the Grenadier Guards, preceded by a Sovereign's escort, two divisions of the lifeguards, three princes of the blood. Duke of Edinburgh, Colonel Grenadier Guards, the Duke of Kent, this morning promoted Major General, Colonel of the Scots Guards, on the grey, and uh, His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales, Colonel of the Welsh Guards. Her Majesty riding Burmese, black mare, given to her by the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, 21 years old, been used since 1969. A wonderful old fellow. The flags of the Commonwealth, she now rides past the flag of Zambia and Zimbabwe and onto the parade ground. wearing the sash and star of the garter and six medals. The Imperial Order of the Crown of India, the Defence Medal, the War Medal, her grandfather's Jubilee Medal, her father's Coronation Medal and the Canadian Forces Decoration. The uh, Duke of Kent there on the grey who suddenly this morning found himself promoted from Lieutenant Colonel to a supernumerary Major General. He succeeded the Duke of Gloucester as Colonel of the Scots Guards and he was the last Royal Prince to be promoted from Major to Major General by his brother King George VI. And so, past number seven and eight guards, past the colour, towards the Horse Guards building, where up at the Major General's window her Majesty Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother awaits with the Princess of Wales. That wonderful old timepiece in the clock tower and horse guards strikes 11 o'clock. 
the Household Division flag flying proudly. As the Queen approaches the saluting base. She will salute her mother above. There, the salute which is acknowledged by a wave, and the royal children there as well. And one day soon, perhaps, Prince William will be standing at that window watching his father. And now that she's reached her position beneath the archway, she will be given the first royal salute of the birthday parade, which celebrates her official birthday. A royal salute. salute is played so from Hyde Park the 41 gun royal salute fired by the King's Troop Royal Horse Artillery sounds out across the parade ground field officer and brigade waiting Colonel Andrew Duncan MVO and this morning OBE Grandier Guards brings the guards to attention and now the brigade major Lieutenant Colonel Richard Haywood MBE, 39 tomorrow, commissioned in the Coltrim Guards exactly 20 years ago. The producer, as it were, were of the Queen's Birthday Parade, followed by four troopers of the lifeguards. Rides onto the parade ahead of Her Majesty the Queen, who will now begin the inspection of the line. The mass bands play green sleeves, and so the first of the five parts of the parade begins. After the inspection of the line comes the troop, a musical display of counter-marching by the massed bands, followed by the collection of the colour by the escort, who then troop it through the ranks, the march passed in slow and quick time, and finally the rank passed by the household cavalry at the walk and the trot, included within the main part of the birthday parade since the first year of the Queen's reign. Tom Taylor, MBO, MBE, who was watching with me, was Garrison Sergeant Major, London District, for 12 years. He retired after Her Majesty's Silver Jubilee in 1977. He served with the Grenadier Guards for almost 35 years and during his time with London District was responsible for overseeing the drill on all ceremonial occasions in London, including 12 birthday parades. Some 20% of the Guards are now taking part in their first Queen's Birthday Parade. The steadiness of the inspection line is the climax of some five to six weeks drill and rehearsal and is proof of our sound depot training in all aspects of drill. The position of attention being the first position they are taught, the guardsman learns to stand still with perfect steadiness without fidgeting or discomfort. In the field, unnecessary movement catches the eye of the sniper or observer. So demanding perfect stillness and steadiness as a dual purpose. Today, as Her Majesty passes by, they stand with pride in themselves and in their regiment. And in particular, the Grenadier Guards, whose colour is on parade today, Her Majesty the Queen having been their colonel when Princess Elizabeth. And there's a voice to make many a new recruit tremble. As Her Majesty the Queen passes now the 1st Battalion of the Welsh Guards. and six guards at the corner, seven and eight guards found by the first battalion Coldstream guards and she will again salute the colour of the first battalion Grenadier guards as she passes by. As you can see, intently interested in every guardsman's uniform and turnout. Turn the corner of number eight guard, past the adjutant in brigade waiting, Major Tedder, on his horse march past. 
and the three princes of the blood behind the Duke of Edinburgh in the centre and his right Prince of Wales, the Duke of Kent. And gold stick in waiting and in the cocked hat the master of the horse, the Earl of Westmoreland. The Crown Equerry and the two Equerries in waiting behind that. And then the non-royal colonels, Colonel of the Blues and Royals, General Sir Desmond Fitzpatrick, Colonel of the Coaching Guards, Major General Sir George Burns, Colonel of the Irish Guards, General Sir Basil Euxter. Major General commanding the Household Division, Major General Jim Eyre on Yeoman, Silver Stick in Waiting, Colonel Hamilton Russell of the Blues and Royals, Chief of Staff, Brigadier Peter Tower in the cocked hat, and ADC to the Major General, Captain Rupert Landrum. And so they now ride behind at number seven and eight guards to inspect the household cavalry. And the music has now changed to the quick march, Portsmouth. standard of the lifeguards, which she presented here on the on horse guards on the 19th day of last month. Past the two drum horses, Coriolanus from the lifeguards and uh, Caractacus from the Blues and Royals squadron. Edinburgh, senior colonel of the household division, 62 yesterday, riding Solomon, usually going as a carriage horse, Solomon, 30 years ago rode for the only time in the uniform of a field marshal, in July 1953 he was appointed colonel of the Welsh Guards and 22 years later in 1975 became colonel of the Grenadier Guards, so a 30 year association with the household division. Prince of Wales on Centennial, horse he rode in the Silver Jubilee. He was appointed Colonel of the Welsh Guards on St. David's Day, 1st of March, 1975. And so the Queen and her attendants move back towards the saluting base at the front of Horse Guards building. And when the Queen and her senior officers have returned to the saluting base, the mass bands will troop in slow and quick time. There are five uh, drum majors on parade in state clothing at the front of the mass bands. Because Her Majesty is present, they wear their state clothing. And only now, across the parade ground, the sound of horses' hooves on the gravel. Uh, the five drum majors on parade in state clothing wear velvet caps, gold lace tunic with gold fringed crimson apron and white buttoned gaiters. Senior drum majors, drum major Peter Foss, Scots Guards from the Guards Depot. The senior drum major, drum major Foss, is one man who must keep cool, calm and collected. Being responsible for all movements and manoeuvres of the bands, he signals with his staff to halt the bands, in the correct places to cease playing and when required the changes of marches during the march past. The field officer first of all will bring the guards to attention as he's now doing. and then give the order to troop 